On this channel, I've discussed the case of Elliot Roger before, the uh, Isla Vista shooter from a couple years ago, and it's almost worth discussing again because Elliot Roger has turned into someone who has become almost, not exactly a leader, but kind of a figure that people look to on the internet now. Let's discuss in this little podcast segment all the things associated with Elliot Roger and dating in the 21st century, because the things that were going on with Elliot Roger and his manifesto, My Twisted World, were he was very much centered on kind of how sexuality was driving him insane, and yeah, he had other problems. And as I said in my previous upload about him, he was a mentally deranged individual, and he's definitely not someone that anyone should ever look to as an icon. He was somewhat articulate, but, you know, he was mentally deranged all the same. It's like, so many things that Elliot Roger pointed out, though, we find in a lot of men his age, ages like 18 to 22, the university years, because no one ever really prepares you for that. And that's one of the reasons to make uploads like this, or just to talk about it in general, because no one prepares you for the kind of emotional changes that you get when you're 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. You're just, you have, you know, major hormonal changes. Everything feels more intense. And also, if you're not regularly sexually active, people are cruel and people are rude and people will make fun of you if you don't have a girlfriend or if you don't have regular sexual activity. They, People do ridicule that stuff. Men and women... And that's very, very poorly reported by the media, how much women are involved with that. And our culture is so destructive. And that's how you get to things like Elliot Roger. I mean, maybe his own mentally deranged state would have caused some problem, no matter what. But our culture really, really contributed. We live in this world where women are taught to run away from sex. And men are taught to run after sex. So it's like sometimes she gets caught. And there's destruction. You know, it's like if a woman has too many sexual partners, they call her a slut. If a man doesn't have enough sexual partners, he's called a loser. And a lot of that stuff is what Elliot Roger talks about in his manifesto, just about not being able to deal with those feelings, not being able to deal with that type of negativity in life, and, you know, not being able to deal with the whole sort of concept of being alone and being rejected, and very few people talk about that. I was hoping on this channel, though, we could not only just kind of go over the bad feelings and go over the darkness of society, and I mean, yeah, of course, society has problems, we can say that over and over again, but what are we going to do about it? Well, I would say that the internet is one of the few places where you can actually go to talk about something like that. The internet is one of the few places where you can go to explore ideas like how to find someone for your, in your life, how to get a girlfriend, how to get laid. Those are the few things that you can actually do on the internet. Like, I mean, that's where you find the information to do it, I should say. Because one of the biggest things, the first thing I would ever tell anybody, you know, in, and I wish I could go back and tell my younger self at age 18, never listen to your friends. No. I mean, people give terrible advice. People in your personal life are, they're cautious about things that they're going to say. And when people try to set you up with someone, if you're like, you know, in the ages of 18 to 22, maybe you've experienced this too, where it's like, they'll be like, hey, yeah, uh, you should come to the party on Saturday and there's going to be this girl there. I'm going to tell her some nice things about you and then I want you to talk to her. That's like their idea of setting somebody up. That is useless. That is garbage. That is nonsense. That's not how you set somebody up. That's not how you help somebody meet someone. No, absolutely not. I mean, it's just like, that's awkward. And it's furthermore, it's at a giant social gathering. And it's like you just want someone... They want to throw you at somebody whom you may or may not like. And then, you know, they just want you to do all the work. And not to mention, it's going to be extremely awkward in a large social gathering. 
on this channel, I've done a few uploads where we talked about some strategies like use four to five different platforms, like use like four dating sites. You know, we're talking Tinder, OkCupid, maybe you have fdating.com, maybe you have something like eHarmonyMatch.com, Plenty of Fish. If you use maybe four of those, maybe five, and also try to just meet contacts in your personal life. And the way you meet contacts that could turn into potential romantic interests, well, avoid your coworkers. Like, you know, if you have a job, avoid your coworkers. If you're a student, avoid your classmates. People are always more cautious around coworkers or classmates. If you're in the university, get involved with, you know, some after class program, some after class activity. People are much less cautious and things like that. If you're, you know, a working professional, a working adult, you know, in your early 20s, get involved in some type of after work regular activity, some type of community event, something that is, um, something that is, you know, outside of work. So people don't have their guard up. Even if you just go to parties frequently, that's enough. You, but you got to find the person that you want. And that's one of the big things that um, people often overlook. You know, it's just like a lot of guys, a lot of guys do something very bad. And this is a very big mistake. I did this a lot in my late, my teenage years and early 20s where it's like you wait for the woman to make the first move. And if you do that, you're asking for trouble. It's like you never sort of take the initiative when you'll be like, all right, I'm going to get on four dating sites and I'm just going to be sending out messages to any girl that I find beautiful and I want to talk to her more and then maybe it'll lead to a relationship. No. Guys, like, you know, um, if you wait for the woman to make the first move and just wait for her to initiate the relationship, that's going to happen, what, once every two years or something when she's actually going to take the bull by the horns and just be like, Hey, I'm going to ask you out. Hey, I'm going to go out with you. I'm going to be your girlfriend. I find that movies and television are absolutely horrible when it comes to that stuff. You always have these beautiful women who are just kind of throwing themselves at, um, and so, you know, it's just some like ordinary guy or like the quiet guy who's sitting in the corner just has some beautiful girl walk into his life that finds him mysterious and she wants to be with him. That is fiction. Those are just for, you know, the screen shows, it's like, if you wait for the woman to make the first move and initiate everything, there's another downside to that. Often, it's, she's making the decision, right? She chose you. There's a high chance this is going to be a girl that you don't want to be with. This is going to be a girl that um, you're not really going to want in your life. And you're just going to have a lousy relationship. You know, if you could just have one relationship every two years and it's lousy, I mean, that's no way to live. And furthermore, if you're in a lousy relationship, everybody's going to know about it. And all the other women are going to be like, hey, look at that guy. He's in a lousy relationship with a girl he doesn't like. And yeah, they're going to use other words. They were just going to be like, oh, I want nothing to do with this guy. And, the, like, I mean, if you think that that's an exaggeration in life, it is not. And if you think that that is something that, you know, could never happen to the average guy, it is not. You know, if you start dating someone that you don't really want to be with and you're only dating them because they've shown interest in you and you feel like you can't get anyone else, that is a reality that many of us deal with. Probably women deal with that, too, who are just like, hey, this is the only guy that want to date me, that wants to date me, I'll go for him. That's just asking for trouble. One of the bigger ways to get over that, we talked about, you know, um, getting on multiple dating sites and trying to meet people just in your personal life. It's like, those are the things that um, really we can look at. And, you know, it's talking to the you, people about this is so difficult because a lot of people are... They're either going to try to be really optimistic and tell you to do things that you don't want to do, or they're going to be really pessimistic and just be rude to you, and, well, that's going to be destructive in its own right, and then you're not going to want to talk to them anymore. So it's like, the only way to really try to find strategies to meet someone, even if you only want to get laid, even if you 
only just want to have a sexual partner every now and then. There's nothing wrong with wanting that. I mean, it's the 21st century. We're allowed to say that, both men and women. People want to have sex, and people want to have sex because it makes them feel good on many different levels. Not only about, you know, physicality, but also it just makes you feel good to have sexual partners. I mean, like, there's nothing wrong with admitting that. So one of the ways that people go about this that um, could really be improved is we sit around thinking, you know, like, I did this a lot when I was younger. I was just like, oh, why do I have no girlfriend? You know, like, why don't I have anyone in my life? Why don't I find someone? But it's like, at the same time, I wasn't using a single dating site. I wasn't even trying to approach anyone in a practical way. And I definitely wasn't asking people out, you know, frequently. Because, you know, if you really just put your heart and soul into one person and you ask them to be, you know, your girlfriend, and she's like, no. Well then, pfft, your world's over. And, you know, I've been there. And I've, I've dealt with that firsthand, and it sucks. But the real way to approach that is, you know, talk to many people. And try to get on good terms with many people. This is a numbers game. Getting laid is a numbers game. Finding a partner for marriage is something totally different. But it's like, if you just want to get laid, you know, it's like, it's all about numbers. It's about getting on a dating site and sending out a hundred messages. And it's also, you know, especially in America, it's more about, you know, um, coming across as... Um, with no creepiness and no insecurity. A lot of people say confident, but no, it's not confidence. It's um lack of insecurity, and there's a very, very big difference there, you know. It's like, even Beavis and Butthead are confident with their hey baby lines, you know, but um, that is not enough. Don't be insecure, don't be creepy, and just try to be as, like, normal as possible, and just ask many people out. Talk to people at parties. Talk to people, you know, at like the, we mentioned, after work activities, after class activities, and use the internet. When I was like 18 years old, dating sites were something very taboo. That was way back when. I'm in my, I'm in my 30s now. So it's like, Dating sites were just something that were, like, not very well accepted. They used to say, like, only losers use them. Or if you were to meet someone from a dating site, it was really creepy. Just because people didn't know what they were. But it's like, when you have things like that, those things are just there to help you. Who gives a fuck anymore? I mean, this is, like, this is totally normal now. This is totally commonplace. Even if you have, like, four or five of them, the more you talk to people the more you're likely to get a good result. And we mentioned Elliot Roger at the beginning, and it's like, all of that stuff in his manifesto, did you ever once see him just sort of be like, oh, I'm going to go talk to a hundred girls and try to get one of them to come over? I mean, it's just like, no, that stuff wasn't there. And a big thing, though, is he did write, though, that he tried to go out and like go to parties and find girls to do things with him. He's like, maybe they'll give me the pleasures that I desire or some kind of weird crap like that. Going to a party and just expecting a girl to fuck you is, is, is absolutely crazy because people are watching her. It's not that she doesn't want to fuck you. Maybe she does. But it's kind of socially unacceptable just to do it, you know, on the fly with people watching. They're going to judge her. Show some sensitivity and awareness of public emotions. Public emotions are shame, guilt, embarrassment, and also, you know, celebration, celebratory things. Many, many things along the way. But the point is, get out in the world, try to meet people, have a good time, stay safe, and I hope everybody gets laid soon. That's all for me now. Until next time.